They're, um, they're talking. Um, Cynthia has something that she put together. Well, Cynthia has slides, right? Are we ready with the slides? Uh, who's going first? That's all. Cynthia. That we learned from Seymour is if there are rules you shouldn't really follow. <laughs> and originally, what we were asked to do is do a presentation, have a panel where what we would be doing is talking individually about how Seymour influenced us. <clears throat> and what Cynthia was going to do is she wanted to do 20 things to do with the computer thanks to Seymour. Now, a bit of background for that. Seymour and I and Cynthia wrote a collection of papers back in, really in late 60s, early 70s. I think we should hold the microphone yeah, up. Which I guess is 40 some years ago now, arithmetic is right. And one of the papers that all of us kept talking about and used this kind of like in organizing things for things that we did since then was a paper called 20 Things to Do with a Computer. And what happened was this paper, 20 Things to Do with a Computer, you got to put yourself back in 1970. A lot of the stuff then seemed like science fiction. If you read the paper now, we're not going to go through the paper exactly now. They seem like they're old hat and almost obsolete. But what Seymour wrote about them was so forward-looking at the time, nobody really believed it was, that it was going to be possible. Well, I have to make a comment. Um, hold the microphone up. Is this better? I, I just have to make a small comment. This, this paper was based on Seymour 19 taught a group of fifth graders in a school in Lexington. And this paper was based on things we did with the kids and things we wanted to do with the kids. And one of the projects in, in that uh, paper wasn't done until a graduate student, uh, one of Seymour's last graduate students, did it with kids. And that was balancing a beam, a stick. And so I just wanted to say that it may look like science fiction, but it took a long time. It, it took a long time. And um, a lot of the visionary stuff then did turn out to be true. And for the purists in this, who like making lists and like making lists, say, th these things are a little bit all over the map, and there's not really much right and reason to them. But let's really get going, since we promised Gary to only use up his time once rather than twice. <laughs> so um, next slide, please. Um, so one of the things is, <coughs> Seymour suggested that we create a programming language for children. And uh, Seymour actually guided the development of the first programming language for children called Logo. Um, a lot of us since then have made other programming languages for children. You'll hear about the mo uh, most oh, recent, yeah, a, a more recent, uh, quite good one done by Mitchell Resnick later in the evening. But the whole notion that there could be programming languages for children was something that Seymour really did introduce in these papers that wrote Cynthia. Okay, do you want to read it? Um, create constructionist activities. Make sense by <coughs> making things. Um, so Seymour studied with Piaget, and Piaget was, um, a lot of pa educators got from Piaget that kids understand by making sense of the world by themselves. Seymour added to that that a good way to make sense is to make stuff. And he gave the name of the idea of making sense by making stuff constructionism. So a lot of the activities that we've all been working on and a lot of what Seymour inspired us to do is various kinds of construction kits that hopefully while you're making things, you'll be learning things as well. Make playful learning environments with turtles and robots. And in fact, I th somewhere <laughs> in the audience, you we can't see this. I'm just going to say oh. these work. Early turtles. This was our first turtle. It was a yellow canister. And this was, according to John Rowe there, who made the first plastic turtle. This is the second one. Um, it, the first one, the big yellow one, I just learned loud, like three weeks ago, was originally black. The thing that I knew about is if you kicked it over, it left battery acid all over the floor, which was why they moved to plastic soon after that. Explore turtle geometry as a first visit to math land. Um, 
Seymour was fond of saying that if you want to learn French, don't go to French classes everywhere, just move to Paris and it gets really easy. So what he felt that we should be doing is making a place where you could visit, but he called Math Land, and you would be able to learn math the way kids naturally pick up languages and move in foreign countries. Program animated graphics. Um, this is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, kids, we've been making kids for kids program animated graphics for a while now, and hear more from Mitchell later in the evening. Sorry. Interact with multiple turtles. We had so much fun with the turtles. People eventually said if it's good with one, why not do it with many? So some of the later environments that we did didn't just have one, but had lots of turtles. Well, the first sprite set was uh, T.I., right. Texas <laughs> Instruments logo, and there were 28 turtles. Emphasize debugging as a powerful tool. Um, this is actually a big one, which may be why it's the word emphasize. One of the things that, uh, if you're learning by making, things never really work. And the thing about it is a lot of, a lot of learning is learning how to deal with things. Moving, taking something that isn't quite what you want and turning it into something that is quite what you want. Recognize that text is not the only interface with the computer. Um, Cynthia put this on, and we were fussing with this because this isn't the category that seems so obvious. Why do you even say it? Um, back when Seymour originally was working on non-text interfaces for the computer, people actually didn't see buttons, touches, gestures, and everything like that. Create micro-worlds, new kinds of places for children to explore. Um, in addition to math land, Seymour had envisioned a whole bunch of other lands for exploring all sorts of different pieces of the intellectual landscape. And in Mindstorms and even before, he was hoping that we would create a large series of micro-worlds that go in, in many different directions. Make robots and turtles with sensors. Um, this is a photo of the Mindstorms kit, which the Lego company produced and then named it after Seymour's seminal book. Make computer-controlled sandboxes, puppets, bridges. Um, this is another one we argued about because it seemed like, well, we put cars off the list to... Yeah. <laughs>